live and I thought this would be a cool video to not only take you guys through my day, but to also share some practical kind of tips and hacks that I do every single day to get the most out of my day. This is gonna be different for everyone and for everyone's phase of life. So please be gracious with yourself. But my first tip is to get up and kind of get to your main space before uh, the kids do. It's not easy to do, and again, it depends on where you're at. I had my fifth child, we're getting close to two years ago, and it wasn't until maybe a handful of months ago that I started doing this again. Things such as not getting a full night's sleep, uh, maybe still breastfeeding, those tasks that are important you have to do can stop you from easily doing others that are really nice to do. Again, that phase of life but I enjoy waking up early and having the ability to do so now because I can prepare the house I can prepare my heart I can do my devos I can look around and see what needs to be done I look at my house as if it's a job site and I'm the one in charge if I know how the day is kind of gonna start uh, that can set the tone for the rest of my day so if I can get up and assess the rest of the day is gonna go maybe a little bit smoother anyway I'm gonna start my devos things I can ever do in any given day when it comes to my kitchen is clean in between meal times. I know why, but you can really easily excuse having to do that because you go, oh, we're gonna mess it up anyway. The things can pile up. I also find that the condition of my kitchen also kind of relates to the condition of my <laughs> emotional stability throughout my day, just because this is where I spend 99% of my day. So I like to give my kitchen a good tidy uh, both me and my husband work from home, so sometimes I'm the one tidying, sometimes it's him, sometimes we do it together. And then also factoring in, we homeschool and the kids stay at home, and this is their learning area as well. And I want it to be clean for them, and for myself. buns for dinner and I have my spatchcock chicken that Kieran's gonna throw it on the barbecue. Preparing food for my kids can be extremely difficult if I myself am hungry. Before you, and this is usually for lunchtime, but before you make your children a meal, get something for yourself. It can be a full meal. Sometimes I try to eat lunch before my kids. Sometimes it's just a good snack. Having a stomach with food in it gives me mental clarity, makes me just physically feel better, and it gives me energy towards preparing the food for other people that maybe I want to. So, kind of that same mentality of put on your own oxygen mask before you put on someone else's. Anyway, I'm gonna eat this. Don't talk with food in your mouth. Then make the kids lunch, tidy some things up here, kind of like around the post. Mm -hmm. 
Heat Element for sponsoring this portion of today's video and keeping me extremely hydrated throughout my busy day. Element is your new favorite electrolyte drink. There's nothing weird or dodgy in here. It is vegan, gluten-free, paleo, keto-friendly, and with a whole lot of salt. You may not know this, but a lot of people suffer from an electrolyte deficiency. The result or imbalance of that can lead to a lot of things. Headaches, brain fog, that's me, cramps, fatigue, overall sleepiness, and I don't have time for that. As a mom, I have to kind of always be at my best because I'm just doing so many things. So Element is a dear friend that I keep close by. It's delicious, convenient. The electrolyte drink mix comes in single serving packs, which makes it easy for on the go or just storage in your own home. There are a ton of flavors to choose from. If you like something more hot, the chocolate caramel is so good. I enjoy that in the evening, but citrus salt is probably my overall favorite. Unlike other electrolyte drinks, Element has a science-backed electrolyte ratio. A thousand milligrams of sodium, that's your salt, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Now, why so much salt? When you sweat, the main electrolyte your body loses is sodium. That has to be replenished. If not, you're gonna be experiencing fatigue, cramps, headaches, and I know you and you have no time for that. But you do have time to have Element every single day as a part of your routine. When you order through my link, you are gonna get a free Element sample pack. That's eight single serving drink mix packs, but that offer is only available through my link. So drinklmnt.com forward slash Sarah Therese is where you can get that offer. I thought it'd be really fun. Oh, I'm, not a, I'm not a fighter, I mean. Yeah, I'll do a dancing party. Oh, yeah. In a place where a lot of stuff happens, it's really nice to be as minimal as possible. The idea of having just the necessities, what you need. Of course, in every single kitchen, including mine, there are some rarity items that are either traditional or nice to have. But when it comes down to it, I look through my kitchen space and every single inch is well used. And with my space being well used, I also wanna make sure that everything I have is also well used. Even as someone who works online and in this space, I can still be pulled into what a lot of us creators do, which is sharing and linking. And what I try to do as often as I can is link things that I link always. My hand blender, my mason jar lids, my KBS bread machine, my Awala water bottle, which PS, I'm an OG Awala. My first Awala water bottle I had for over four years, close to five years. And I got this one not too long ago after my other one cracked from my son dropping it on to the pavement from our deck. <laughs> we used to live in a mobile, and in that mobile, we couldn't have anything and everything we wanted. We had to be really particular about what we welcomed into our space. If you haven't seen my kitchen tour, it's a minimal, a very intentional, clutter-free kitchen tour. I go into all my cabinets everywhere and I show you guys the guts of my kitchen and tell you why I try to be as minimal as possible in here. So if you're waiting for it, this is your sign to declutter, to organize, to make your kitchen work for you instead of you working so hard for your kitchen. bread, baking, kids are watching an episode of Little House on the Prairie. And I wanna talk about a couple things here that really helps me with either my days or my weeks. The first one is what I'm doing right now, which is sitting. Um, I'm usually up on my feet, I'm usually busy, and at the end of the day, my feet are honestly extremely sore. But certain things like throughout the day, finding time to sit, this is not what I mean by t finding time to sit. What I mean by finding time to sit is to sit and rest and be thoughtful. So I'm taking a little bit of that now and I'll take a little bit of that in a bit here. And I wanna remind you that even Jesus had to get away from the crowds to rest and to be with his father. And that's something we as mamas not only can, but should be doing. Not taking our phones and scrolling and shutting our brains off, but um, opening up our hearts. Find time in your day to sit and rest. Um, I also recommend, and this is something I usually do end of the week, is meal plan. So I do my meal planning as well as a bunch of other stuff in my weekly planner. 
This one I got from Indigo a long time ago, um, but it's basically just sheets. It's not a calendar that you keep. It's something you write down on a Monday or Tuesday, and when the week is done, you rip it off, throw it in the recycling, and then you start fresh again. I meal plan anywhere here on the side. Meal planning for me has nothing to do with breakfast or lunch, but it's dinners. I have a meal planning video, and I can link that down below. I also, I don't live on a farm, I don't have animals, I don't have a garden, so I really rely on meal planning to make sure that when I go to the grocery store, I grab everything that I need for that week. And as you can see in a bunch of these things that I'm talking about, just these practical tips, a lot of it is having control where I can have control and plan where I can plan. The Bible says that planning is a wise thing to do, so I like to plan, but I also need to be careful because sometimes I can overly rely on my planning and feel terrible when my plans don't work out. The next thing I wanna talk about is time blocks. I think so much of the time we can see our day as just one whole complete day, which it is. Uh, but what I like to do is time blocking. So time blocking is looking at my day in usually about four different parts. So I have my morning block, my afternoon block, my late afternoon block, and then my evening block. The first three blocks are my busiest. The last block, uh, things have really slowed down. Usually kids are kind of in bed or almost getting there. And then for each block, I can say, okay, in my morning block, this is what I wanna tackle. In my afternoon block, this is what's happening. So instead of viewing my day as a whole and having to eat a whole, um, uh plate of pie, I can just go slice by slice. It's a lot easier on my stomach. So right now I'm in my afternoon block. I am just about headed into my later afternoon block. That block is a lot of house chores as well as if we are homeschooling, we're kind of wrapping that up and then getting dinner started. Anyway, those things give my days and my weeks um, some construction to them. It's not disordered, but there's a lot of order and I do find peace in that. I am a planner. I like looking ahead and seeing what's coming. If it fails, so be it. But I like to step forward in my day and go, these are my blocks, these are the meals. And then also for every single block, I do like to pull a bit of time from each one and being able to sit and rest. This bread's just about done. I have some other stuff I need to do. I gotta wake up some babies. It's almost always nonstop, almost. Not always, just almost. the best things you can do in your day is to work with your margin. Work with your time, your extra time. Work towards always giving yourself extra time if you are doing something that's quite big. For me, that's dinner. So I never start dinner in about the time it'll take for me to make it and then sit down and eat. I give myself margin. And I usually start making dinner way before we eat dinner. For example, it's a hot day, so we're trying to use the barbecue as much as possible because I still make our own bread. I made sourdough buns this morning. So those are done. I don't have to do those. That was this morning. Here in spatchcocked chicken on the barbecue. Mm. Mm, mm -hmm. So I do what I can to have control over my day, but I also know that I can't do everything and sometimes things are gonna come up. <laughs> So we work with Margaret. If I'm making dinner, I wanna eat at five and it's gonna take me an hour to make, I'm gonna start it at 3.30 because this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen and I'm gonna have to tend to these kiddos. So make what you can ahead of time. All I have to do right now is chop up veggies. We're gonna pull the spatchcock chicken apart and stuff it into these buns and that'll be our yummy dinner. Yes, wait. Use your manners, love that. Please, wow, good manners. In this instance, it's gonna take me like 20 minutes to get everything together, but I've given myself 45 because this is, this is getting really crazy really fast. So tired. This is the point in my cycle where I'm just extremely tired at this time. This is my last thing. I'm just gonna sleep while I talk to you. This is the last thing that. I'm... 
is the last thing that I will usually do um, in the kitchen. Mine is maybe a little bit of sourdough, but that doesn't count because I'm not doing that today. And it is properly closing my kitchen and putting my kitchen to sleep. Here's what happens when I properly put my kitchen to sleep. I sleep better knowing that my kitchen is sleeping. I wake up easier. Um, I don't feel like I'm waking up to things that have to be done that I could have done previously. It's that clean, fresh, slate feeling. I'm able to be more productive in both uh, my evenings and tomorrow morning. I'm happier. I'm nicer. In all of this, I just want to be thinking about future Sarah, future Kieran, future kids. What's going to just make our lives easier? So let's close this kitchen. Also, something's wrong with our dishwasher. So Kieran's going to be poking at that. <laughs>